Hello, my name is Jared Krebs. I'm pictured here with my wife, Crystal, and our dog, Tasia. We're Emerald Directors, co-founders of Team DSI. And today's training is going to be the next chapters in the 15 Valuable Laws, Invaluable Laws of Growth by Dr. John C. Maxwell. Live them and reach your potential. Now, if you don't have this book, I want to really encourage you to get it or the audio book as well. These laws have tremendously changed my life. They have helped me. They have guided me through my 11 years in the company. Uh, living these laws is really what's helped me generate a six-figure income and be able to, to live a lifestyle that's um, definitely above average, much better than I was doing before. Now, before we start, I just want to remind you that growth Number one is the only guarantee that tomorrow is going to get better. Just because you're getting older doesn't mean you're getting better. In fact, a lot of times people that are getting older, things start to get worse. Things start to get worse with their health. Things start to get worse with their finances, et cetera, et cetera. So really, personal growth is the only guarantee that tomorrow is going to get better. So you want to always be growing, always be learning, always be investigating, always be stretching. Number two, growth means change. That's just it. You can't stay the same. If you could be, if you could have the things you want, being the person that you are, you'd already have them. So growth means change. You got to change to get to to become that new person to attract those things. Now keep your morals, keep your keep your values and beliefs, but change everything else, especially the habits. <laughs> All right, growth conscious versus goal conscious. This is a really big one. This is one that took me many years to get. Basically, you want to be aware of growing instead of going for just goal after goal. And I'm going to show you a slide on that next. Growth is joy. That's the last part. You know, I can say that that um, all the great things in my life have come from growing, not necessarily the goals. It's just from being being and becoming the man that I've become over this time, and learning from leaders who are are better than me, and basically people who continue to inspire me. So uh, take a screenshot of this if you're watching on the webinar. This is the difference between someone who's goal conscious and growth conscious. If you're goal conscious, you're focused on the destination, right? You want to arrive. You want to get to gold or you want to get to diamond. But when you're growth conscious, your focus is on the journey. You're just focused on helping the next person, helping the next person. You know, who cares if you get to whatever rank? You're just going to keep helping other people, and you're on this journey of personal growth and helping others. Okay, a goal-conscious person is motivated. They, all, they have all this motivation, but a growth-conscious person is mature. They get matured by the events, by, the, by their growth. Uh, a goal-conscious person, the goals are seasonal. Uh, the gro a go growth-conscious person, the growth is lifelong. A goal conscious person is challenged. It challenges you. But a growth conscious person, it actually focusing on growth changes you. So obviously we want to we want to change. Um, someone who's goal conscious, that when the goal is reached, they plateau. But when someone who is goal conscious, when the goal is reached, they keep growing. That's another thing. You know, when I became an Emerald Director, we were so happy we reached the goal that we stopped working. We took like a month off to celebrate how great it was that we're Emerald. And guess what? Our business went down. So who cares if we're Emerald, if we're not helping people and our income went down? Obviously, we learned a big lesson there. Our income is definitely back where it was and we're growing, but we had that was a big lesson I had to learn. Um, I, I celebrated a long time when we made Emerald. We were happy. And, and, and uh, anyways, now I know, keep growing goal is, is reached when we keep growing. All right. So the last week's webinar, we talked about the law of reflection, which was number five. I'm sorry. Number four was the law we, we finished with the law of consistency. So we're going to, we're going to pick it up with the law of reflection. Now, when I watch this, uh, the webinar on this, they actually have different top leaders sharing what they do at, relating to each law. So this leader was Simon Chan, who is actually a personal mentor of mine. Now, keep in mind that this is the, all the top leaders in network marketing were at this event. So Simon Chan gets up there and he says that, first of all, network marketing helps us live our full potential. It allows us to give back more. And it also helps us become better parents because we're leading by example. So those are three things that that network marketing does. And um, the, the thing that I got from, Doc, uh, from Simon Chan, he says, I must take time to think daily, go on walks, unplug, meditate. You know, so often we're, we're plugged into Facebook, we're plugged into our computers, we're plugged into the television, that we don't actually take the time to think and reflect. 
reflect on what's working, reflect on what's not working. And these are critical things to be successful. So Simon Chan says this, and I hope you have a pen and paper. Each night, write down three wins that happened in your day because life can beat you down. You know, life can life can just take the wind out of your sails sometimes. You know, you have a bad day, things don't go right, and you feel like your business is just going to die. And like that, that, I felt that way many times. And it's funny that when I actually force myself to write three wins of the day, I always have three things that happen positively in my business that day. But I wasn't focusing on them. And you get more of what you focus on. So this is really important, the law of reflection. You have to focus on the good things that happened that day, and you're going to get more of that. Also, folk, uh, write down, he says, three things to improve every day. So three things you can improve, and then three new things that you're grateful for. So at the end of every day, take some time and just write three wins, three things you can improve, three new things that you're grateful for, and then lastly, he says 10 random things you're grateful for. Like you, you might be grateful for the sunshine. You might be grateful that your spouse made dinner for the family. You might be grateful that your iPad is working and you know you, you, you're, you can be grateful for an inanimate object. You might be grateful for any myriad of things, but just um, writing those things down, it really, really, really helps. So that's the law of reflection. Now, Simon takes it one step further. Each morning he meditates for five minutes. I can tell you that um, since I've been doing that, that's really helped me become centered. I've been doing that for quite a while, about two years. Um, Ten things he's grateful for and three things he's grateful for for his spouse. So that's, you know, that might say if that sounds like too much, then just do the nighttime thing. But um, you can also start your day off right by by being grateful for ten more things, writing it in your gratitude journal. Just get a composition notebook and write those things down. Because get this, when you feel good, you do good. Write that down. When you feel good, you do good. That's that's really what this is all about. The law of reflection is reflecting on the great things that's going on in your life. And um, it's who you're becoming that matters. Our thoughts determine our actions and our actions determine our results. So again, if we can be reflecting on the positive things in our life every night and every morning, that's going to actually determine our actions. We're going to feel better. We're going to take more action and our actions determine our results. So that is the law of reflection and definitely is a great, great tool, a very essential tool for you to grow as a leader. Next is the law of the ladder. So this law was presented by a friend of mine named Jordan Kemper and his wife, Kristen. Jordan is uh, actually a colleague that's been with us in in USANA. He's a three-star diamond director. And this one, um, the thing I like about Jordan is he gets very vulnerable. He gets very real. And the law of the ladder basically states that, um, you know, it's, it's all about character. And the character trait, do you know, do you know, I want to ask you, and I, I guess you guys can't talk back to me. Maybe you could text me, but what's the character trait most desired from a leader? What would you want mostly from a leader? What's the character trait you want from the person or people who are leading you. So Jordan goes on to say that that's honesty and integrity. Honesty matters. And so your team is always watching. And even today, Renee Martinez told me that. He's like, Jared, everybody's watching you, everything you do. And he's right. But the thing about it is you got to stay humble. You know, um, being, being authentic and staying humble, that's the really the best thing to show your team. And there's three easy ways to stay humble that Jordan says. Number one, be teachable. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Serve others and be grateful. So again, I'm going to repeat those for those who wants to write it down. I got a text from Luis Sanchez, always willing to learn. That's true. Three ways. Okay, here it is. Three ways to stay humble. Number one, be teachable. Number two, serve others. And number three, be grateful. So if you're teachable, you want to be quick to listen and slow to speak. This business is not about the person who talks the most. It's about the person who listens the best. All right. So that's the main three things there. And then also develop your character, heart, and soul. Jordan's big on that. I love what he had to say about that. And 
his wife got up there. They talked about marriage. They talked about growing as a couple. And one of the best things I can uh, recommend that you do, especially if you have a significant other, is to plug them in to plug them into these types of trainings. Take them with you to the seminars because a couple that grows together is the best thing. That way you don't grow apart. That way you grow together. All right, so let's move on to the law of design. So the person who came out on the law of design, her name is Kristen Kirsch, Kirschbaum. And so she comes out and she starts talking about this gentleman named Kyle Maynard who crawled to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro without arms or legs. So he had been, he had been uh, in an accident and he lost his arms and his legs and he still crawled to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. And when she talks about designing your life, she says that there's basically five pillars. And um, she had us draw out like a, a rainbow from like the, the left side to the right side of our, our piece of paper. And, and basically at the end of the rainbow, you write down like all the things you want, you know, like being a 15 star diamond director or owning your own home or being able to give, you know, $500,000 a year to orphans or having tons of leaders. And she says that, that basically for you to get there, there's five pillars that you got to design your life by. So the number one one, and, and here's another, I mean, I took all these notes, but the number one thing is to take charge. There's two conditions in your life. You can either accept the circumstances or you can take charge and change them. All right. So we all have, we all have bad things that happen to us. But what are you going to do? Are you going to accept the circumstances and be like, oh, I can't build my business today because, you know, I had a flat tire or because my kid is sick or because, you know, this and that happened. Or are you going to take charge and figure it out? So that's number one, take charge. Number two is, is collective genius. If you're writing that down, collective genius. You, that means you got to study others, be teachable and ask questions. Guys, there's so many gold, ruby, emerald, diamond, executive diamond, one star. There's so many people making six-figure incomes doing this. It's possible, but you got to study others. you got to be teachable, and you got to ask questions. That's really uh, part of accessing the collective genius. Number three, belief blueprint. If you're writing that down, I'll repeat it. Number three, belief blueprint. So what that means is, basically how you believe is going to, to, to create what you do. And we can all get negative at times when something happens bad. Are you going to go right into the negative vortex? Or are you going to try and get yourself into the positive vortex? You know, sometimes that's not easy. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I need like a night to just kind of sulk or something, but the quicker you can get out of that, that's actually a skill so that you're, so you're not always going like, like something that used to make me sad and, and put me in a funk for a week. Now that only puts me in a funk for like five minutes. So that's one of the things is not letting things get to you. But not only not just to, like it's not about ignoring it. It's about actually having the mental uh, training and also calling on people to help you if you're ever stuck. All right. So next number four, if you're writing this down, uh, this is the, the, the fourth pillar for the law of design is to track your numbers. All right. So we, we do that in our team. We have our weekly action plan and our, our daily method of operation tracker. But you got to track your numbers. You got to invite you have to track how many people you're inviting every day, how many people are watching the videos, how many people you're having at events. And then you have to mentor others to do the same. OK, so you have to track your numbers. Do you want a team that tracks their numbers? You got to track your numbers. And then number five is schedule your success. So I can't emphasize this enough. You've got to schedule when you're going to make your calls. Schedule when you're going to be with your family. Schedule when you're going to have quality time with your kids. Um, you know, it's family first, but work your business and your time scheduled. And always ask yourself, what is the one thing today? Like, think about it right now. You're, those of you who are taking notes. What is the one thing that you can do today to, to build your business? That's the number one thing. And, and also realize that it might take – what you, what you think might take one hour might take twice as long. So if you sit down and you're going to make calls for an hour, sometimes it might go two hours. 
So you got to sometimes give yourself some grace or give yourself a little extra time. So those are the five pillars to design your life. And that is the law of design. Okay, so now we're going to go to the law of curiosity. Now, I love the guy who came out and spoke on this, John Holowaty. He's actually from, uh, I believe it's from Ireland. And he comes out and he has his, his awesome accent and I just loved it. And he says the law of curiosity basically is um, how can I grow myself to serve other people? Who do I associate with? You got to, it basically talks about the law of curiosity is being curious about other people. You have to be friends first. You can't just go and sell you sauna like crazy. If your friends aren't happy about your success, they aren't your friends. Okay, so when you're when you're being curious about people and you're asking them questions and they're telling you things, that's the best way to lead to business. But if you have friends that are negative, friends that aren't happy about your success, they're not really your friends. And you know, that's one of the main things about this type of business is that like be aware of energy vampires be aware of people that are actually trying to suck out your energy and you know society kills curiosity Our, we're we're programmed to actually kill curiosity because of of you know the just the beating down that we get as we we grow up and all the disappointments and all the things that happen in life and society and the conditioning of society so obviously we have to be able to retrain ourselves to be curious there's a diamond just waiting to be polished and they will reflect that light on someone else. So you, if you're curious about people, be curious about your team too. Don't just call your team and say, hey, what did you do today? First of all, be curious. Hey, how was your day? What did you do today? Then ask them about their business. But talk to them about their family first. Be curious about them. Friends first, business second. How, say, how are you? You know, strangers are friends you haven't met yet. The law of curiosity is great when you're in public because you just be curious about somebody and about their life and what they do. And next thing you know, they're becoming your friend. In fact, the majority of all the best people I've enrolled in my business, they were strangers. They became my friends through curiosity. So be curious about your team. It isn't about the money. It's about the people. Just so showing someone you care could save their life. You never know what somebody's going through, but you need to show them that you care. So many people are diamonds just waiting to be polished. And again, you're, you're that person. You're that person that can bring that diamond out. So one of the key things I got from what he said is I train people to be better than me so they can train people to be better than them. And I love that because I want you to be better than me at every facet of USANA. So I'm going to train you the very best I can to be better than me. And then I expect you to go and sow into other people. And I expect you to train other people to be better than you. And that's how we're going to build this, guys. That's how we're going to do this. And this is not just about duplicating the system. You need to definitely duplicate our system, our one-hour checklist when people get started, uh, the way we build with our videos and our mixers. But you also have to duplicate the philosophy. And guess what? The philosophy is personal growth. Reading 10 pages a day being on webinars, going to trainings, going to the, the big seminars, the destination events. That's a philosophy. You have to duplicate that philosophy and your business is going to grow 10 times faster than if you're just duplicating the system. Duplicating a philosophy is servant's heart, helping people, thirst for knowledge, thirst for growth. All right. Um, for those of you who are taking notes, check this out. Here's a golden nugget. Okay. When you have success, ask yourself, how did I do it? Reflect, okay? Be curious about how you had success. Then ask, how can I improve it? Then ask, how can I teach it? Then ask, how can I duplicate it? So I'll repeat that. When you have success, ask, how did you do it? Then ask, how can you improve it? Then ask, how can you teach it? then ask, how can you duplicate it? Every time I feel like I'm getting away from the fundamentals, I ask those questions and it really helps me get back on track. The other thing about curiosity is um, you cannot teach hunger. 
You know, so ask your team, have you got a thirst? Have you got a thirst for knowledge? Have you got a thirst for growth? Have you have a, do you have a thirst for fun? And when you're curious about those people and those people are, are showing you that they have those thirsts, that's who the ones you want to spend time with. Also, he says, have fun and party with your team. And we need to do a fun night. We need to do a Team DSI fun night here in San Antonio. But we also uh, want to encourage you on the webinar in other cities and states to also have a fun night. Do some fun things with your team. I know many of you do that, do that already. But um, that's a really key thing is this, is this is a fun business. It's supposed to be fun. So make sure you, you make time to do fun things outside of building your business with your team as well. You know, we have a gift. We have to go out and share it. And lastly, on this one, would you, if you could grow more, should you? If you could change more lives, should you? If you could give more, should you? Is it worth it? Yes, it's absolutely worth it. So that's the law of curiosity. And that's one of the ones that has really helped me grow, especially when it comes to meeting new people, building the team, friends first, all critical things. All right, guys, now we're going to the law of the environment. All right, so the law of the environment. Oh, my gosh. Oof, there's so much good stuff here. I, uh, I'm just going to start. Okay, the law of environment. Growth thrives in conducive environments. This is why the events make so much sense. 95% of your success is dictated by your environment. Did you hear that? 95% of your success is dictated by your environment. We must put ourselves in a growth environment consistently. That's why attending events like GoPro in December, why going to Challenge You, why going to international convention is absolutely critical. Because when you go to convention, you're spending your time with the best people in the company. Now, I want to warn you. When you go to convention and when you go to the GoPro event in Las Vegas and when you go to challenge you and when you go to the sweet retreat, oh man, this is something I never knew before. There are, it's called the rule of thirds. 33% of the people at convention are going to be negative. Even though they're at convention with the best in the world, they're going to be negative. They're going to be skeptical. They're going to be at convention and they're going to be skeptical. And you have to you have to figure out who's who is in these thirds and make sure you're hanging out with the best third. Okay, the second third, the second 33%, they're gonna be so so. They're gonna be in the middle. They're gonna be like excited when everything's great and, and then they're gonna be negative when something goes wrong at convention or or anything in life. So they're they're gonna be so so. So that's sixty-six percent of the people at these events are gonna be in those two spots. And then there's the top third. Those are the people who are sitting in the front of the room. You want to you wanna be with the top third, the 33% that's making it happen, the 33% that's positive even when it's hard? You go sit in the front of the room, and you make friends with the people in the front of the room. You even pay extra to sit in the front so you can be by the top learners. I've done that many times, and by investing that little extra money to be in the top or be in the front, if some events don't let you do that, but others do. You make friends who are in the top 33% instead of sitting in the back with people who are, might be negative or who might be distracting you and you don't want to be around that energy. So make sure that you are, are constantly striving to be in that top 33% when you're at conventions. That was so good. That was one of the things I'd never heard before. Um, it's not always comfortable to hang with people greater than you. I know that for sure. I feel con uncomfortable every time I'm hanging out with people who are making double, triple what I make. Um, they've helped double or triple the people. But it's always profitable. Always ask questions. One of the other things about the law of the environment um, that basically, I don't know how exactly it fits into it, but she talked about it here. It's selfish to be a people pleaser because you're denying who you really are, who you're becoming. So being a people pleaser, being someone who always says yes to everyone at all times, that's actually selfish because you're denying who you really are and who you're becoming. Sometimes you got to say no to the wrong environment. Okay, so all 14 other laws function within the law of the environment. Now, if you do what is easy in life, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard in life, your life will be easy. Have you ever heard that? 
I heard that from Les Brown, but this came up in the law of environment. I'm going to repeat this. If you do what is easy in life, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard in life, your life will be easy. Honestly, that sums it up right there. Guess what, guys? It's hard to make phone calls. It's hard to be organized. It's hard to get two hours or an hour of phone calls in every day. Uh, it's hard to prospect. And that's why your life will be easy because you'll have a huge business that pays you. Um, it's easy not to prospect. It's easy not to be disciplined and read your 10 pages a day. If you don't do those things, your life will be hard. So I really love that. It's so true. How much are you willing to invest in your in your environment for your success and dreams to come true? Now, the environment, uh, you know, it has a lot to do with who you hang out with, but it's just as much to do with the books you're reading, the things that you're watching. You know, if you're watching sports all the time, which I, I'm guilty of, of watching sports probably too much, but I've had to limit that and make sure that I'm I'm watching more leadership and growth things and, and maybe 10% sports and 90% leadership and strategy and things to become a better man. You know, um, I love sports, so I'm going to watch a little bit, but I'm going to be really careful so that I can control the environment of my mind. All right. Um, you need to have a, a person. Well, oh, this is a great one. Um, personal develop our, our company working with USANA, working in network marketing is a personal development program attached to a compensation plan. A personal development program attached to a compensation plan. That's basically what this is. You're going to have to grow if you're going to be successful. All right, guys, that's the law of the environment. Man, that one blew my mind. Okay, so now we're at the law of modeling. And the law of modeling, uh, basically, this uh, the gentleman who came out and spoke was Fred Graves. And the law of modeling basically states that you have to model the people who are having the success that you want. All right? And, and so... He talks about the um, there's two C's of there's two C's of success and the two C's of success. First C is choice. You have to make the choice to study. You have to make the choice to be humble. You have to make the choice to model and listen and take advice. Everything's the choice. All right. The second C is success is uh, the second C of success is change. You have to be willing to change. And what, what I mean by change is changing your habits. You don't need to change your values. You don't need to change, you know, like that those deep core things that work for you. But you do need to change your habits. That's the main thing that's diff that differentiates where you're at and where you want to be from you. And let's say someone who's making six figures or seven figures or, you know, really impacting tens of thousands of lives. It's all about habits. I can tell you, man, they're hard workers. And um, discipline, going to bed early, going to bed early is, is one of the things that I am, I am working on right now. That's my new habit to change. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to stay up late. Anybody can stay up late. It doesn't take any discipline to stay up late. You can just watch TV and veg out. It actually takes discipline to, to shut your, your body down, kind of lay down, um, you know, breathe, rest wind down so that you can go to bed early so you can wake up early and 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 have the most from your day and that's one of the things that i i used to think oh i'm just a night person well that's actually i'm just an undisciplined person i, I actually need to get myself to bed earlier so that i can get more out of my day and that's definitely been a big change for me so i'm i'm getting texts that it still shows law number nine i'm seeing law number 10 on my end um i'm not sure why you're not seeing law number 10 i've i've switched slides dad many times so I'm going to keep going. Just just know that we're on law number 10, the law of modeling. Now, um, oh boy, get ready for a good one. You ready? The only thing separating you from where you want to be is the fears in your head. I'm going to repeat that. The only thing separating you from where you want to be is the fears in your head. If you don't face your fears, how can you expect your team to face theirs? You might have a fear about investing too much money to go to an event. You might have a fear about calling somebody on your chicken list or calling somebody you don't feel like would want to be interested or you don't want to be rejected by. But if you don't face your fears, how can you expect your team to face theirs? The best thing to, 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 um, over, to face your fears is to just get used to doing it. It's like a muscle. Once you face your fears of, of all these different things, 
it's like, okay, something is, is scaring me. Okay. I'm used to it now. I'm going to just go ahead and face it right now. And in fact, if the quicker you do it, the quicker the fear is going to go away. You know, um, it's called the law of diminishing intent. If you, if you actually think about something so long, you're, it's like you're, you're less likely to do it. So when you think of a fear, do it right now. Don't even think, do it right now. And that's how you get over that. Um, also, if you don't visualize, how, you, how will you know that you get there? That's another part of the law of modeling. Um, all the most successful people I know, they visualize every morning. They visualize their goals, their dreams. They have it on their bathroom, they, you know, they, like their bathroom mirror. They're always visualizing and putting good thoughts into their mind, especially in the morning and also in the evening. So the law of modeling is really a critical one. There's a lot to this, but you can take it one step at a time. Um, the other thing I got from the law of modeling, it's not what you say, it's what you do. It's easy to say, hey, guys, you need to go prospect. Hey, guys, you need to go sign up new people. But it's totally different when you go and sign up new people. And I want to give Rene Martinez a big compliment right now because he has enrolled a brand new person. And that's showing his entire team, as busy as he is with that team, that he is enrolling new people. That's exactly what they need to do because they see their leader doing it. Many of you are enrolling new people. I'm really proud of you. I just want to give a shout out to Rene. Um, especially the little things, um, you know, so the little things is what makes all the difference. That extra phone call, that extra detail with your, your associates, you know, that extra thing that comes to your mind and you might feel like, oh, I'm too tired. Just do that extra little thing. The little things make all the difference. And also people will weed themselves out. You know, there's going to be people in your industry. There's going to be people that, that actually um, in your business that quit. When someone quits, that doesn't stress me out. That's just them weeding themselves out. And it's just like a garden. You're going to have some weeds grow. And when the weeds, when the weeds have to go, it's not, it's not something that you get sad about. You just you have a cleaner looking garden. So everybody has people who drop out. Everybody has people who quit. So don't ever feel bad when someone quits. That means you're actually growing a nice big garden. That's part of growing a garden. Okay, guys, so the law of contribution. This is actually the last law before I go into questions. Man, we did not get through the 15 laws we're going to do. I guess we'll finish off the the, uh, the laws 12 through 15 after uh, next week because next week, week we have new Diamond Director Josie Tong. But um, we will pick it up on law 12 next week. So this is the last law we're going to do tonight, the law of contribution. So the law of contribution requires a mental shift, the way to be. Change in mindset, change in understanding. So it's not just about giving money. You can give time. You can give compassion. You can give energy. You can give understanding. You can give forgiveness in addition to money. But the thing is, to, in order to give more, you must become more. And that, beca that obviously applies to money because you have to earn, you know, attract more money to give more money, but also compassion, understanding, forgiveness. You have to grow as a person to be able to give those things. So I must identify my weaknesses. As a leader, I must identify my weaknesses. No well-built ship sails around the world with holes in its sail. So I must identify my weaknesses and work on them. And again, like I told you guys, my thing I'm on track to do is be someone who goes to bed early, somebody who wakes up early, and someone who works out regularly. I have to take care of my health to be able to take care of my team and my family and my life. So that's my thing right there is um, those, are the, those are the things that I am improving. And increasing your personal currency. Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is a great most fitting way to end the, the training segment. Increasing your personal currency. The more you invest in you, the more you can give to others. You do that by attending events, reading, growing, and then apply to your lifestyle and leadership. So um, you, have, you, have, you have to have more leadership skills coming in than you have going out. Because in a time of need for your people, it's going to be costly if you're not that leader for them. What that means is you have to constantly be studying leadership and growing because if you sign somebody up, and you can't be a good leader for them when they need you to be, then they'll probably leave. They'll probably drop out because you're not, you're not up to snuff. You can't lead them and give them the leadership. So you always have to be a step ahead 
of everybody that you're training. You have to, and the only way to do that is to keep growing yourself. And, and then hopefully that, you know, by the time you enroll someone or your next person, you're a better leader than you were the last person you enrolled. All right. And, and then you're going to have those skills. You're going to be able to help that person because you're a better leader. You can handle problems better. And that's how you can contribute. So when we talk about personal currency, we're talking about the value that you bring as a leader to your team. And you have to have a whole lot of value. You have to have so much that you have to have more than you than 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 your your people need, so that they don't ever need so much that you can't give it. You have to always be full, like rich with leadership, so that you can handle that. And the only way to do that, and and this is how I want to end end the training tonight, is you have to prioritize daily time for personal development. So if you're if you only write down one thing tonight. Please write that down. Prioritize time daily. Prioritize daily time for your personal development. So what that looks like for me is I wake up every morning. I visualize. I um, After I visualize my, my goals and dreams, I get up, I brush my teeth, and I review my goals in the morning in the bathroom. With my, I have them all written down, and I go through and I look at my goals while I'm brushing my teeth, and I feel the feelings of having it, right? That's, that's actually more like visualization, but then I, then I have my vitamins and I make a shake and then I spend 15 minutes reading and I read at least 10 pages. I also do my spiritual practice, which is course in miracles. And I meditate. Um, it's, it's, it's a combination of reading and meditating for 15 minutes. So I do 15 minutes of reading 10 pages and I do 15 minutes of my spiritual practice with course in miracles. That's my plan. And I stick to that plan. I always do it. Uh, it's very rarely that I miss, and that is my prioritized time. Now, throughout the rest of the day, I am listening to webinars. I am listening to audios. So I, I at least read 10 pages a day. I will not miss that. But the rest of the day, I'm trying to, I am doing 10% sports and 90% audios, John Maxwell, Jim Rohn, anything I can do to grow. That way I can give more. I can contribute more, not just in finances, which I do give, but I also give in these other ways. So I want to encourage you guys to do the same. Prioritize daily time to read those 10 pages a day because it's a slight edge. You're going to be 10 times better than associates who don't read if you've read, let's say, 36 books in three years versus the associate who thinks reading is a waste of time. I tell you, associate who's read 36 books, they're a tremendous, tremendous asset to their team. All right, guys. So that's the training for today. Um, we'll go through next week the law of trade-offs. I'm sorry, in two weeks, the law of trade-offs, the law of pain. That was a really good one. The law of the rubber band. What does that mean? I know what it means, but we'll go through it in two weeks. We'll go through the law of expansion. Very good stuff there. And uh, and then the closing um, address from Holton Bugs, who's a top leader in the industry. So we'll be doing that. Thank you for attending. And um, we'll take a second now for a, a brief pause. But thank you for attending and watching this training segment.